Alright, Geometry Kid, this is uh, my second attempt at making a video or a series of videos that maybe about the uh, constructions that show up in Chapter 4. Okay, um, so here I have a little organizational chart of the sort of various levels of the types of things you're going to have to do for the constructions in Chapter 4. Here's the basic things you're going to have to do. A angle bisector actually is, is kind of old news. We did that in an earlier unit. Perpendicular bisector is a process you're going to have to do that's parts of, that shows up as a sort of sub part of just about all the um, other constructions at some point, including even this one, part C. Uh, that's sort of the basic level of, of each one of those constructions. Um, sort of you know, step one on each one of those. And then with that, we're going to take each one of those things to, to various levels. So really, it's not like we have, you know, these. 14 different constructions. It's basically these three. Well, actually, it's like two and a half. And then we apply those in a triangle, and then we uh, sort of apply them more than once in a triangle and get one of these things. And then what's that good for kind of down here? Uh, what's going to be on the test? Well, I'm going to kind of leave that a little bit of a question mark, but uh, I'm guessing we're going to ask you something kind of in this this category range, something in this category range, something in this category range, and they'll be of different types. Uh, like if I ask you A on here, I'm not going to ask you, you know, angle bisector down here. We might ask median down here, and then over here we're not going to ask in center or centroid. We might ask uh, ortho center or something. So you get one of each of these types and sort of one of each of these types. I'm guessing that's not a promise, but that would be a good thing to be able to do. Okay, so uh, this page you can come back and refer to it. This will be the way I kind of go through this video. I'm going to go in this order. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad. I thought of lots of different ways to do it, and this is what I come up with. You can fast forward now if you want using this table of contents. I don't think this will happen all in one video. I'm planning on uh, splitting the video into parts if I need to to get through everything. I may not get through these. These are just to fill up the last video if I have time. All right, so let's get on with the show. All right, how to do an angle bisector. Um, you've done this before. You need your handy dandy compass and you need your straight edge at the end to draw the to draw the angle, actual angle bisector. Angle bisector, uh, it's probably a good idea to sort of estimate this. Angle bisector is going to look something like a ray that's going kind of through the middle of this middle of this angle so that it cuts the angle exactly in half. It's a little bit off, but again that was just estimation. And the way we do this, like we did before, is you stab here at the vertex of the angle you drag, I'll do my answers in red, you drag your, oh I won't do them that thick though, making mistakes already, you make sort of a, a rainbow arc across the two parts of your uh, angle and where you just drug that you're going to stab uh, at those parts of the angle so right here stab and draw an arc out here in space that you think is going to cross that, that bisector and leave the compass the same and stab from the other side the other side I'm trying to, I'm targeting this right here and draw an arc that way okay and once you've done that then this is my target point I'm going to drag my ruler around and I think I'm getting better at this now it doesn't go exactly where I want it but you get the idea I'm trying to go right through that point and draw the line Okay, and then that is my final answer, and I'll highlight that so we can tell what I'm talking about. This is the thing we wanted. We wanted that ray that goes exactly right through that angle, cutting it perfectly in two equal angles. Okay, the next piece you'll have to do, um, sort of basic construction level stuff, is find the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. So perpendicular bisector is a line that first of all goes through the midpoint of AB so imagine that's the midpoint what we're looking for, what we're going to get is a line that goes through that midpoint so it's not only a midpoint but it's actually going to be perpendicular that's kind of a big deal, that's a very useful that's a, whoa, sorry about that uh, it's a very useful um, I meant to circle this and I grabbed the whole window. Uh, it's a very useful construction because it's it, it, it's the first time we've actually been able to construct perpendiculars and um, midpoints are good for other things too. So let me get rid of all this highlighter junk. Uh, so sometimes I call this one the football. You'll see why. First of all, you got to open up your compass so that it's bigger than half. You know, obviously bigger than half of AB. Now this compass, the way I've got this drawn, it almost doesn't even reach you know much past half, but we'll stay there. Uh, go bigger than half, and then draw a big swoop 
that's going to clearly cover that estimation line that you can kind of eyeball. And you leave the compass the same. Of course, that's always the tricky part. Leave the compass exactly the same. Stab at the other end, and you swing the same arc. Now, you see why I call this the football construction? There's the football. That was the whole purpose. Once we have the football, all we have to do is connect the ends of it, and that will be what we're looking for. That's going to be the thing that goes through both Oh, really? I can't get any more accurate than that? Look at this. Oh, that's better. Okay, I'll take that. This ruler doesn't really like to... It's very like low res where it stops. Anyway, so imagine that was connecting that end of the football and that end of the football. Then what we've got here is this line that is now the constructed to be the perpendicular bisector. It's, it's perpendicular to the original line, and it cuts it right at the midpoint. Again, sort of a big deal. All right, this one is the last sort of base level part you're going to have to do. Um, say we have a line here and a point off the line. We know that there is one line that is perpendicular to K that goes through R. And sort of by eyeball, we're kind of looking for something like this. It's going to be perpendicular to there, and it has to hit R. Okay. Um, the perpendicular construction we did, whoops, I lost my point R. I know why I lost my point R. I should just uh, try to get it back here. Um, the the only thing is point R. The only uh, construction we had before for perpendiculars, remember, was a couple of pages ago. I showed you. Remember, if you had a segment, you could use that football construction to find this perpendicular bisector. Well, that's great if you know the endpoints of your segment and you're trying to get the halfway kind of perpendicular. Well, here I don't have any kind of segment that I that you know I that's going to be halfway, uh, has, has a halfway perpendicular thing that's going to hit R. But I can locate one. I'm going to try to locate a segment on here that's perfectly centered under R, and then when I perpendicularly bisect it, so, you know, something like this, I'm going to locate some kind of segment like that that I know that if I perpendicular bisect it, it's going to go through R. So that's the, that's the first objective. How do you do that? Well, you just stab at R, Please let me grab this compass. Okay, I can do that. Can I grab the thing? Thank you. Uh, stab at R. And swing your compass so that it is going to cross the line twice. You know, so it's big, it's big enough to reach across the line. And then swing it so that it crosses that line twice. You just crossed the line, mister. Yeah, I crossed the line, I crossed the line, and I came back. That's exactly what you have to think. All right, so this segment here that's connected, you don't have to draw these, but the segment from that point to that point, so the segment that's now inside that circle that I just drew from R, that is kind of what I was thinking about before. That is exactly centered underneath R. Let me get this stuff out of there you don't need, but now you know what I'm talking about. If I do the perpendicular bisector of that, it ought to go through R. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I set my compass so that it is bigger than half of that segment, clearly. Okay, that's bigger than half. Great. And I do the football. So swoop. So I think it's going to cross that path. And then other side. Stab it right on there. And swoop. Looks good. And then when I draw that line, going from that end of the fish to this end of the fish, or the eyeball, or the football. If I do that, I guess I can get a little more accurate. And then lifting it off, I lift the mouse and stop drawing. Ah, see, I missed. I missed horribly. Now let's undo that line. Uh, get it to go through there. That's a little better. Both ends of the fish ought to hit R. Uh, with these ruler tools, it's about as good as I can get. Anyway, with your, with your actual physical ruler slapped down on the page, you'll probably do a better job. Anyway, that's it. And the overall answer to this is this line. This line answers the question. It's the thing that is the line that is perpendicular to K and it also goes through R. The only line that does that. Okay, so now multiply sort of each one of these things into or apply it into the context of a triangle. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Um, <clears throat> So, construct the angle bisector of angle A in triangle ABC. This is exactly like two or three you know, pages ago when I said uh, angle bisectors. But, now we're going to do angle bisector in a triangle situation. This is really not a whole lot different than when I had to do an angle bisector in general, but I just kind of want to ignore this segment here. Uh, I'm trying to bisect angle A, so really all I care about is angle A. I care not about the segment down here. Um, I just care about the angle bisector process. So stab there, do your thing, 
come out here. I'm going to leave it the same, but I didn't have to. I have to leave it the same after I do this one. When I go to do this one, and that's good enough. I've crossed that. That looks pretty good. And I draw this line. And that is the bisector of angle A. That's coming right out of, you know, centrally there out of angle A. But now it's in a triangle. Um, that's only slightly different than when you just saw the angle by itself. You have to know which angle you're doing. You have to sort of ignore this thing out here. Don't worry, it gets complicated. Sorry if that's too boring for you. All right, construct the perpendicular bisector of side BC. Same thing, perpendicular bisector is the football. I'm kind of looking for this line here. Again, ignoring AC. This has nothing to do with AC or AB. Just kind of trying to focus on this segment B to C, and I'm trying to find the perpendicular bisector of it. Okay, so um, I do my football on BC, and I kind of just have to let my mind ignore everything else in this picture and just focus on this segment here. Okay, make my compass clearly bigger than half, swoop around where I think that path is going to go, stab at B, do the same thing, all right, then connect the ends of my football, and that's all there is to it. I'm going to run out of time here pretty soon. Got like four minutes left. I can think of a good stopping point coming up, actually. Mm, something like that, okay. And I want to make sure I draw this line extended as, as far as I as I can. Okay, so there it is. That's the line that goes through the midpoint of BC, and it is perpendicular to BC. See, I'm really not doing anything new. It's just now there's this sort of triangle that's kind of in my way. Oh, median. New term. Maybe we'll stop after this. This will be good. Median we've never done before. Median is one of those segments in a triangle that connects a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So if that side's a mid, if that sorry, if that point's a midpoint, this little thing right here is called a median. It connects a corner to an opposite midpoint. This one says construct a median. So it kind of lets me go wherever I want. I could go from A to side BC, or I can go from B to side AC, or I can go from C to side AB. What I got to do is locate one of those midpoints. Well, what do we have that locates midpoints from what we've already done? Notice I didn't say construct midpoint anytime between now and or since I started. But we did do perpendicular bisector, and perpendicular bisector cuts things in half. Actually, if I try to do the midpoint of BC, I don't think this compass is going to reach. It's all the way doing the splits there. Is that going to be big enough to get halfway? No, it's not. i got T-Rex arm problems here. Let's go, um, how about AB? I'm afraid if I do the, this one over here, I'm going to go off the page. Okay, so I didn't think about that. Uh, here, yeah, that might work. Okay, all the way extended. I can make an arc here from B. So I'm looking at trying to do A, B here, and I can try to do one from A. How often do you completely extend your compass? Probably, yeah, this will work. And we have a football on the page. Great. And then I will woo, connect the ends of my football. Now here I'm just looking for midpoint. I don't really care about the angle or the perpendicular bisector, but perpendicular bisector is going to be the way that I find it. So there you go. And there's perpendicular bisector, but really I just did all of that just to be able to locate this midpoint. The median simply um, connects a midpoint and the vertex opposite from it. So this is the midpoint of AB, so I connect that to C. C to, I'll write this here because I want to save this as a static document later. this is what I'm doing. And to get midpoint, I did the perpendicular bisector. Because that's the only that's the best way I have to locate mid midpoint is actually go to the trouble of, con of constructing a perpendicular bisector. So now I just got to connect the dots here from C to, the, to that midpoint I just found. Something like that. And I just got to draw it from C up to there. And that is a median. Now that has a, what, what's hard about that construction is it ends up making a lot of extra junk you don't need to see, especially when, and this will be the next, this will come up in the next video, when I have to do more than one of these in the same triangle. There's a lot of extra stuff in my way, particularly this perpendicular bisector line. I really don't care much about it. R really, once I need it to figure out where it crosses BA, but after that, it's just, now I've got that point, ignore everything else about it and just connect it to C and I'm done. Okay, um, I'm about to run out of time on my video max length here, so I will stop here at the end of part one. And I'll see you in part two.